We are live. Hey, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Thank me later, family. So listen, I know you're here because you either follow me, Janai Thornton, or you are part of our Thank Me Later community. Or maybe you even follow us at TML, not money, or TML money. Regardless of why you're here, we're glad you're here because guess what? One of my BFFs, <laughs> um, somebody that I've worked with for over 20 years, um, also happens to be one of my sorority sisters too. I guess you can tell the pink and green. <laughs> Um, it's Carol Jones. Yes. 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 And so we are here for our session um, that we affectionately entitled Prove It. Yeah. Because people don't understand if you don't prove what you own when you try to file a claim, guess what's going to happen? We can't claim it. Yeah. Y'all not going to pay. No. So we're getting ready to teach y'all how to do a home inventory. So guess what? We're going to treat it just like, um, what did you say, Tiana? Just like MTV Cribs? MTV Cribs. Oh, okay. come, come on, on in. in. Come on in. <laughs> teach you how to do this. All right, Carol. So um, the purpose of today is for all of our, all the people in our Thank Me Later community to understand whether they live in a house or apartment, we all have what's called that personal content. Absolutely. And that covers all of our stuff, right? That's mm -hmm. like our so it's your pots, your clothing, your furniture, your televisions. It's right. everything that makes your house a home. Oh, so regardless, again, apartment or um, a house. Yeah, apartment, house, your condo, wherever you live. Right. We've got some contents in there and we want to show you how to claim them. But what I think a lot of people don't realize is if you have a fire, a tornado, a hurricane, a flood, and I have $100,000 of personal contents coverage, you all, you are my State Farm agent. You're not going to write me a check for $100,000. No, we're looking for you to be able to give us a list of those things right. that you own. So you're right. itemizing those things to us. Right. You're saying, hey, this is my television. This is my couch. Right. I'm not just going to hand you a check for $100,000. Right. So we need to make sure that we document the things that we own. Right. And so nobody has time to do it the old school way. We're not going to write all that stuff down. So we're literally going to walk through this house. We're going to show you all how to do it. In um, uh, inventory list. I'm going to be recording. Tiana's recording us. Um, and if y'all have any questions, if y'all have any comments, please drop them in the chat. Tiana's going to read them off to us. I yes. want to make sure that you're good in case you ever have to file a claim. So Absolutely. Let's get started. Let's get started. Y'all, come on. Let's do it. So we have walked in the front door. Yes. Right? So now we're in the living room section. I'm recording because, again, I'm not going to write all that stuff down. Absolutely. So you just want to make it easy for yourself. So right. you're in your living room. So right. you're standing here and you say, okay, now what do I have in my living room? And right. you literally start recording. Right. Here's your couch with your four yellow pillows on there. And so you want to just make it easy where you're literally just going place by place recording those things that you own. And so I know when I did my home inventory, I was literally trying to remember, oh, I bought this furniture from Leather Creations. I got this TV about what year. So does it help to have some commentary with the video? It absolutely does because, first of all, most right. of us don't know what the receipts are. Of course. That's the first thing. Right. But it helps with your inventory when you're telling us, oh, I got my couch from Ashley's Furniture or from right. Cavities, whereas right. my girlfriend may have purchased hers from Ethan Allen. So right. what you want to do is give as much description and detail about the things that you own so right. that when it comes to a claim, right. hey, I've already told my claims adjuster, Ashley Furniture, right. purchased around 2010. Right. I paid seventeen hundred dollars for it. Here we go. So there we've got something to kind of go on from there. Okay. So also, what I did. We I have a question. Around, oh, we have questions. I'm already feeling stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you where I purchased this. The year I purchased it. How much I paid for it? Right. Okay. So if I don't have that, tell me how, like, what's the basics? Okay, so again, you've got the actual couch itself. Okay. Right. So you want to have a general idea of what it costs because we know furniture can run from one end of the gamut to the other. I could have purchased mine at Haverty's. You could have purchased it at some nice little boutique. So what determines whether I'm going to give you $6,000 for the couch or $300 from the couch? So the more information you give me, you can even describe it. It's fabric. It's whatever it is so that I know exactly what you have. You simply telling me that you lost a couch in a fire is not enough information. Mm -hmm. 
So you want to make everything your fingerprint. This is your home. Right. This is what you own. So that's why we want to be as detailed as possible. That's why it's important too to do the inventory often. Yeah. Yes. So you can remember what you, you have. want to do at least once a year. So I think it's also important too, Carol, for people who have um, electronics, if you can get access to like the serial number, particularly for like theft as well. Absolutely. So if you can, for this TV, I can actually get back here where you can take a picture of it because a lot of times I know y'all actually ask for that. Well, who the heck has that information? Right. Nobody does. I know, um, uh, why would I do it other than the inventory? Exactly. Okay. So you want to make sure, give a description of the television. This is my, I don't know, 32-inch TCL television. Right. And the serial number is, or you've got a picture of the serial number. Right. You can even take the remote got the remote, you've got the TV, so now we've got all the things that we're saying, these components belong to this particular television. And you're doing that too, because most likely you've got more than one television too. Right, okay. So it's really important, y'all, I know this sounds crazy, but I know that y'all have time once a year to do this. We don't need you to do it every day, you don't have to do it even once a month, but once a year is really important. So let's talk about the outdoor stuff, because we're gonna go out to the deck. Okay, so the outside is just as important as the inside. Right. You've got furniture out here, you've got some kind of grassy carpet out here. So again, these are still contents that you own. Right. This is still your personal property. These right. are things that you want to make sure we include. That you've got six aluminum chairs, a, a table, right. and if you had an umbrella or maybe your grill out here, those are still things that belong to you that you want to make sure that you record. Right, and so I guess if you have a grill, if you have some like outdoor fireplace. See a trampoline over uh, there. A trampoline. Right. I'm assuming that's all the outdoor stuff you want to include too. All of your personal property. So when you're thinking of mainly about contents and the things that you need to record, right. if you can move it somewhere, right. write it down. And also, I mean, I have my personal experience, but if you've updated your deck, do you want to keep the receipts? Do you want to talk about the type of material that you use? Because every deck That's is a different. Great question. How should we handle that? So you still want to, you always want to notify your agent when you update your home. No. But this deck itself, you can't pick it up and take it downtown for a park, a picnic or something. So it is important when you're talking about what you own and how, um, how it has enhanced your home. But it's not necessarily personal property. It's a part of the structure. Right. Still important because you want to make sure you've updated your policy with your agent. Right. Uh, I'm Good glad question. That you mentioned the materials too because that matters. You know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like, yeah, absolutely, it does matter. And people normally find out that information the hard way. You didn't tell us that you've updated your kitchen counter, that you right. don't have plastic laminate anymore, now right. you have marble. So we need to know those things again, which is why you should do the inventory, because you, you start to think about things. Right. So you, you mentioned property versus material, so it's two separate. Two separate things, okay. right. So the house is the house. Right. It's, this is attached to the house, we can't move it anywhere. This is our property because I can take this chair and I can take it to my mom's house, let her borrow right. it for a day. Right. Okay? Girl, you came out here, you didn't even introduce yourself. You're on Instagram Live right now. Hi. 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 I'm Hi. Stephanie. Hi. Hi, everybody. This is a, one of our True Few community members. With great questions. I with know, great questions. Thank me later, True Few community. Yeah. Girl, right, coming yeah. through with the questions. You guys can join at thankmeletter.money. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Tiana. So come on, y'all. We're going to do the rest of the house. Carol's going to show us how to do this inventory. Oh, wait a minute. Before we leave, what do we do about, you know, most of us ladies have high-end stuff like this. High-end purses. We got a be another beautiful bag over here. Whether it's shoes or purses, do we need to show this? Separately, we list this separately on our policies. How do we handle this? Absolutely. Well, you can handle it any way that you see fit. I keep my list of handbags and shoes with my bedroom items because that is in my closet. So I know my handbags are over there, my shoes are in there, so that I'm keeping a list there. Mm -hmm. Now, this becomes important because if somebody steals my handbag, right. do I want them to pay me for a Gucci bag, a coach bag, or a bag. <laughs> so, it makes a difference. So, right. So oh, this no. becomes really, really important. Right. A claim to justice when you said when you say my bag was stolen. Right. They're thinking a regular handbag. 
they're not thinking about a bag that you could have paid $1,500, $2,000 for. Right. Take a picture of the bag. These bags have serial numbers. Take a picture of the receipt. Take a picture of the box that it came in and make that, that whole the one little show. I um, did a, a session with my sister where we just took pictures of her bags. Mm -hmm. Serial numbers, the color, the approximate time that it was purchased. And another thing, when you don't have a receipt, when that lucky little man gave it to you for your birthday gift, but he's no longer in your life, you have no idea <laughs> what Clyde is, but you know that Clyde gave you the handbag, the day that he gives it to you, or right. at some point, take a picture. To look it take up. a picture. Right. You didn't pay for it, but you still want to be reimbursed if something happens. So you, you like the bag, you just don't like Clyde. Right. So <laughs> there you go. So why, that why is his name Clyde? Clyde. <laughs> She and I worked together on the Envision side. She can attest to this. So we had a client who had a major break-in recently. Um, we filed a claim. And one way that we were able to prove the purses that were stolen were pulling down pictures from Instagram. Mm -hmm. So we could actually show her with the purses. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we got no pushback at all. So um, the claim was, I think, probably a little over $200,000. And the purse collection was crazy, but no question at all because we could put the whole picture together for them. Absolutely. And had we not been able to do that, we would have gotten that regular purse Absolutely. versus this, real, this full purse Absolutely. collection. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So that is really, really important. Yeah, so definitely you want to make sure that you make your inventory, and I say this a lot, right. your fingerprint. Your fingerprint. Right. It belongs to you. What right. you own is going to be totally different from what I own, and it's up to us to make sure that we tell the claims adjuster what we have. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go on, carry on to some other sections of the house. So literally, when I'm doing my inventory, y'all see I got my camera up. I literally just go through, and I'm taking pictures of everything. Yes. The curtains, the window treatments, the artwork, the furniture, everything matters. Everything matters. And I always tell people, don't assume just a theft. You know, when somebody broke in your house and they happen to get something out of the bedroom and maybe out of the living room. Think of the worst case scenario where you are really devastated and you've lost everything. Right. When it's time to start putting things back together and giving an account of everything that you own, you did have curtains. Right. You did have some artwork on the wall. You right. did have a log on the table. <laughs> so you right. want to make sure that right. you have given an account of everything. And the descriptions matter. Like the average person, like my mom, she's got a wood table. Here, this is this fancy glass table. You want to give a description of it. There's right. a seat six. There's a seat four. Did you have six chairs? Mm -hmm. What do they look like? And right. then back to your point again, when and where did you purchase it if you don't have the receipt? If it's a particular brand of furniture or a particular uh, type of artwork that you want to describe, make sure that you give that information as well. Right. You want so to say you that. You want to say that. Control. And yeah, because you're making this personal again and right. you're making it your particular diary of your content. Right. Oh, so that one thing that I'm thinking about is, you know, if you did have a fire or a complete loss, who could remember all of that stuff when you're mm -hmm. under that much stress? Right now, it's like, oh, it's just get out. It's just, just get out, out. right? Yeah. And then yeah. after the words, it would almost feel like punishment to mm -hmm. have to sit down and think about all memory. of that mm -hmm. after you've lost everything. Mm -hmm. So being able to pull up that video and be like, here you go, it's got to be a game changer. Absolutely. It sounds like I need to upload it to a safe place, not my phone. In case it burns down in the fire. Um, definitely, you want to save it. So you want to save it in more than one place. Okay. So I always tell people, you know, mm -hmm. email yourself. Email right. the video to yourself. Right. You can pull up your Gmail account anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Give one copy to your mom. If she's like my mom, she saves everything. She still has my baby <laughs> shoes. So <laughs> you can only imagine that she will be more than happy to keep my inventory on file too. But yeah, right. definitely at least have two copies. And that's easy to do with technology. Right. Mm -hmm. so. We have a question on Instagram Live. Yes. So why do you say... Hi. Hi. She says, do we need to have this inventory on or in multiple places? Yeah, for sure. Because we're going to think again. We're always thinking worst case scenario. If it's a tornado and my house is totally demolished or if it's a fire, 
whatever copy I kept at home, I no longer have access mm -hmm. to it anymore. Right. So we've got all these things now, saving it in the cloud, which I don't necessarily understand, but again, <laughs> leave it at your mom's house or right. you know, somewhere, say more than one place, right. or leaving it with you know, your sister, whatever the case may be. So definitely more than one copy, more than one place. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. All right. You guys keep, on, keep at dropping in going. questions in the comments. All right, so we're just keep, we're walking through the house still, just trying to see. So again, we're just filming everything. And are we literally, Carol, are we like literally opening cabinets as we do this? I always suggest that because what if my hair dryer is down there, mm -hmm. my 26 curling iron, that sort of thing. So she has 26 curling iron, for real. 26. <laughs> so you want to <laughs> you make sure, like everybody's got their thing. So yes, right. open up the cabinet so you can kind of see. Now, one of the things about the bathroom that you may find is just most of those things belong there. You cannot move the toilet. You cannot right. move the shower. Right. But what makes this important is it's just not your average bathroom. Right. Let's look Don't at the let's, let's look at the floor. Right, let's take a look. Let's look at the shower head and all of that. And right. while this does not necessarily have to be a part of our contents inventory, right. it is important if we have improved or remodeled something so that the insurance company knows. Again, right. I didn't have linoleum. I I've got this LVT tile, I've got this little pebbled uh, backsplash and that sort of thing. So that's why all of these things still become important. So I have a quick question. You may have mentioned it already. Because we're taking yearly inventory, should we share this with our advisors? Is this something that we need to, well not need, but should we give it to you other than just keeping it for ourselves? Absolutely, because you want to make sure that you've got enough coverage. It does not do enough for you just to record the information. What if it turns out that you are underinsured? So I can't pay you for what you didn't have coverage for. So if you just put in a $50,000 kitchen, you know, you put in a $12,000 bathroom or you get a $10,000 deck, you want them to know that because you uh, do I have enough coverage right. for mm -hmm. my current house plus this upgrade? Now? Absolutely. So yeah. you always want to make sure mm -hmm. that you know what you did and they know what you've done. Mm -hmm. So that way. I go back. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And how often should you be meeting with your agent? Well, you get your policy every year. So why not review it every year? Most people do the same thing like I do with my Georgia Power Bill. Just open it and throw it in the drawer. I know i got to pay them and I just I disregard it. But when it comes to something where you've really worked for, for most of us, our home is going to be our biggest investment. Right. Mm -hmm. When you think about literally losing all of that because you did not have enough protection right. or we were not aware, I mean, it's devastating. So you want to make sure that you are reviewing this every year. Hence, doing that inventory every year, it's a trigger. Right. I also need to call my insurance company. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. along the lines with this, just on another note, I guess, for landlords, do we do this as well? Mm -hmm. And how often and what exactly do we That's get covered under question. property? Yeah. Okay, so the things again that we can move out that you own. So you've got a tenant in your home, but you put the washer and dryer there. If something happens to the washer and dryer, what do you want me to give you? A Kenmore washer and dryer or a Samsung? Did you just purchase it last year or have you had it for 10 years? So yeah, you too want to keep an inventory of the things that you own in your property. You know, some people have furnished homes. They say, well, you can rent this place. Absolutely, you can rent this place. So now you've got more than the typical things like a washer and dryer and a refrigerator. You've got a couch. You've got a television. Right. You may even have towels and dishes there. Mm -hmm. So that becomes important for you too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for all of you who own Airbnbs, rental properties, you absolutely have to do this too. Absolutely. You gotta do this too, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have a comment, not a question, but Flossy Girl says, if you're keeping inventory on your phone where you may have other identifying info, mm -hmm. you should probably make sure that it's password protected. That's a good idea. Don't yeah. provide an easy connect to the dots. Right. I agree. Yeah. That's, That's really good. good. Because Thank like, you for that. Right. Yes. You don't want to give anybody any right. indication well, this is your phone house. and your stuff. <laughs> 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 Thank you for, for that yeah, comment. Nice <laughs> so we have appliances, so we want to make sure we're clear on the brand that we have, make and model, serial numbers, we want to capture Absolutely. all of that. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So again, we want to make sure anything that's got a serial number, always record that serial number. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we want to open up cabinets again. Just take a quick picture of what we have in our cabinets. Mm -hmm. right? This okay. is all things you would be doing in the inventory video, opening yeah. cabinets, yeah. chores. Just walking through. All Absolutely. right. Okay. So now let's go over to a bedroom. So when we come into a room like this, I'm just assuming, again, we're just taking a panoramic view of what we have. Yeah, so just kind of take a, a view of the room. So okay. we're kind of showing, like, a, 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 telling a story about each room. Okay. So here we go. I've got two nightstands, two lamps. I've yeah. got this high headboard, nail heads. It's some sort of fabric, maybe leather. Mm -hmm. So you want to give a, a full description. You just don't want it to be your... Typical 12 year old canopy bed. Right. So, you want to really give a, a clear description of what you had. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a, you know, a, a rug that I can move around. I've got curtains again. And then, like we said before, because we've got more than one television in the house, right. give another description. This is my Westinghouse, I don't know, 45 inch television. Right. Again, we're getting that serial number. We've got a remote, most likely, that matches up with this television. So, we're giving all the things that show. This is what I own, this is where it was, this is what they took, I've got a serial number, I've given you the approximate price, the location of the television, when it was purchased. Mm -hmm. Got it. Awesome. And even things like this. Right. Here, somebody's working out in their bedroom. These are the things you don't think about right. Right. in the event of a fire. Right. Like, I just know that my bed is gone, my mirror, and my television. Right. You forgot all about your weights. You right. forgot all about your yoga mat. Right. This is still your personal property. Yeah. You need to tell us about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, this is when people really realize how they are possibly underinsured. Right. Because they're thinking about the big things, not right. even considering all the, small the little, stuff. small, minute right. things that make up a bedroom. Because right. mm -hmm. you want all your stuff to make you whole. Again. Absolutely. All right. your stuff. Because you would have to replace it. You're still right. working out. Right. Just because mm -hmm. they took it doesn't mean you're going to stop. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you've got a record of the things that you own. So mm -hmm. another question. I know that we will tell them, okay, I purchased this in, like the Peloton. I purchased it in 2019. And we know there's a recent reduction. It's $400 less. Mm -hmm. Will they honor the original price that you paid? Or you're given what the value would be today in space time? So no. time for the Peloton. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a free commercial? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what are we doing? We're making you whole. We're okay. not giving you more than you ever had. So, yeah, so, it, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a touch and go kind of thing. Right. So we owe you for what we have. Now, we want to pay you to replace your Peloton, right. but if you paid $1,000 and today you can get it for $25, it's, yeah. yeah, because again, <laughs> it's not we're making, not, you, whole. We're making right. you whole. We're making yeah. you whole again. Right. But that same scenario, you know, you think about other things. Think about 15 years ago when you get a little flip phone for $65. Now right. Apple is saying, give me $1,099. Right. So again, we want to do what's right by you. Mm -hmm. And again, it's based on what you told us about your fingerprint right. and the things that you own. What do you, do you have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have another question from Instagram Live. Yes. YD Say asks, do we include trinkets or items we collect? Mm, absolutely. So you got people that collect all kinds of things. So like we said, we've got some young ladies that collect handbags. Right. We've got some people that love jewelry. Right. Some people that collect sports memorabilia, all of those things. Now the tricky part to that is, yes, we want to record it. But is it covered under your policy? Mm. So mm. if you take somebody and you say, okay, I got $100,000 worth of contents, and then I, as the insurance agent, says, how much of that is jewelry? How much of that is furs? And you say, oh, $25,000 in jewelry, $15,000 in furs. And I tell you, now we're going to step over to somewhere else, and we're going to give you an itemized policy that most insurance companies refer to as a personal articles or a personal floater policy. Mm -hmm. So think of that as your specialty policy. Right. It's still my content, but I've got more than the average person in jewelry. Mm -hmm. I've got more than the average person in furs. I collect uh, old baseball cards. So I've got $10,000 in appraised baseball cards, or I've started to collect real artwork. And I've got a description for those things. So those are what we call specialty items, and they have to be on a specialty policy. It's a separate policy. It's a separate policy altogether. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really come. Absolutely. I'm like, hey, I have all these jewelry because I do like to collect different jewelry. Right. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm going to collect this. Right. Like, 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 I'm going to collect this.
times when I travel. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I've never included it in my policy. So you're saying that it's not there, so they would not cover it. So they have a small limit that they will cover. Right. Some policies cover up to $1,000 flat on jewelry. And that's it. Can and that's imagine? it. Some policies cover up to 2500 but yeah. most policies, the maximum that they're going to cover, regardless of how much jewelry you've got, $5,000. That's, mm. That's it. So you need to go back and list those things and say, I've got diamond stud earrings. Right. This is the color, cut, clarity, and the appraisal to match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is my Picasso that I inherited from, I don't know, Brad Pitt. Right. And it's worth $15,000. And somebody's given a real life description of that, some professional. And so now we can guarantee the replacement of that item. Right. And when you look at this specialty policy, it is literally listing out that item. If it's three items, the policy is three items long. Right. If it's 60 items, that policy is 60 it's items long. Them one it's by one. listing them one by one and it is specific. That, Ani, is when the appraisal, the date, the and everything matters. Yeah. So you can't say, oh my God, I can't remember when I purchased those studs. Well, you better get an appraisal. Yeah. You better get some sort of documentation because now you're asking me to do something outside of the norm. You want me to give you back your earrings that were stolen. Right. And you say, look, I provided the appraisal, the cut, the color, the clarity. Because when you say diamond earrings, I'm saying, hey, was it a quarter carat or was it two carats? Right. right. So, okay. Yeah. That is so great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who took it. Yeah. But it went missing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had a diamond ring. Of course, it was a simple one. So a thousand, it was probably no more than fifteen hundred. So now should I go ahead and claim it because we're covered up to a thousand? Or how would I handle that? And would that increase my policy? Do you have a deductible? If you got a $1,000 deductible and you got a $1,000 ring, you back at zero. Mm -hmm. Right. Because keep in mind, your deductible is what you're saying. I'm going to own this part of my claim. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I don't care how many claims you have, you got a deductible every single time. Mm -hmm. So whether or not you claim it at that point, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to consider what what does this do to my premium by claiming this $1,000 earring. So I just take this loss and say, next time I know, that's my things. Okay. And typically, when you do file a claim, is it like a 10% increase, a 3%? How, how are you looked at? There's the so many are? factors that go into it. What kind of discounts you had on your policy? How many claims have you had? Is it a chargeable, what we call a chargeable loss, or is it an act of God kind of thing? Mm-hmm. So there's so many factors, but there again, that's when you ask your agent, yeah. when this happens, what's the outcome? What's, gonna happen? what's the worst and what's the best? And so that way you start to really, really understand. And then your agent then knows what's important to you. Let me remind Stephanie that this is what she needs to do. Don't forget to do her inventory. Right. Make sure she does this. Is a deductible, um, a high deductible important to her or does she want something lower? So those are the types of conversations you have based on your insurance fingerprint. Right. And so if anybody's just joining us, um, thank you for joining. Thank me later, our prove it session. And we are here with Carol Jones from State Farm, and we are teaching you all how to do your home inventory. We have Stephanie with us, who is part of our Thank Me Later True View community. And any questions that you have about your insurance, about filing claims, um, why we're doing this inventory? Because just because y'all have coverage does not mean your insurance company is going to write the checks. We want to make sure that you're good. And October is the month. We're focused on insurance this entire month. So this is the month I want you to do your inventory. This is the month that I want you to make an appointment to talk to your insurance agent. So don't worry about doing it later. Like we're going to get it all done in October, okay? Yes, we have a few questions. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Lots of engagement. Thank you guys for dropping them in. So MPT420 said, have you all discussed actual costs versus replacement costs? No, we have not. So let's talk about actual cash value versus replacement costs. And we kind of touched on it when you asked me about the Peloton. So you paid $1,000 for the Peloton two years ago when they first came out. Now they're selling for $600. Replacement cost is $600. It's not $1,000. Mm-hmm. Actual cash value also says, I have a policy that says, I purchased this couch from Ashley Furniture in 2015. When I bought this chair, it cost me $500. Well, now we fast forward six years later, it's depreciated in value, so my $600 chair is now worth $212. 
So the insurance company owes you $212 because you purchased, purchased an actual cash value policy and not a replacement cost value okay. policy. Good. Now, same chair. Purchased it 2015, $600 is the price you paid for it. Now when you go into Ashley Furniture, they're selling it for $895 because you, you purchased a replacement cost policy $895 because that's what it costs to make me whole again. Mm -hmm. So that is another thing you have to check on your policy. Do you have a replacement value policy or an actual cash value policy? That's important. So what do you suggest people get? Replacement cost that policy okay. because again, it's all about making us whole. Okay. It does me no good if you give me two hundred twelve dollars okay. and I can only purchase one leg of this chair. <laughs> so I really want my chair. I really like the chair, but can I afford to just pay the eight ninety five that's going to cost now? So you really do want a replacement cost of policy, and the premium differences are not that significant. Right? Mm. So again, ask yourself, what do I expect in return? if something happens. And keep in mind, this is what you've selected. So we give you what we owe you. We can only do what's in the contract. Did you purchase an actual cash value policy? Well, then that's what I'm gonna give you. Okay. And those two options are available to landlords and others. Yeah, so you can personal. actually, yeah. So again, you can say to your uh, agent, I wanna make sure for the things that I own inside of this rental property that I receive actual cash value. You tell me what I have here and what do I need to do to make sure that if this house burned down, not worried about my tenants' things, mm -hmm. I'm worried about the things that I have Stop. in here. So yeah. there we go. So you're not worried about just getting the house rebuilt. Now I need my washer and dryer again. I need that chair that I have downstairs in that basement. I need those things replaced. Mm -hmm. Have a few more questions. Okay. Flossy Girl asks, how do we account for old irreplaceable photos? Mm -hmm. Hundreds too many to take a picture of each one. All the, so if you have all that personal stuff, you got your kids, baby stuff, you got all those pictures. It, it's sentimental. It means so much. And, and I'm sorry. I knew you were going to say that. That's your stuff and that's your good feeling. <laughs> it means nothing Aww. to us. And that, again, is where you feel like you just lost out. But mm. how can I say that my grandmother's uh, picture is worth $100 and your grandmother's picture is worth $20? Mm. Right. I mean, so it's one of those things. Yeah. It's one of those things, right, that you cannot replace. You just can't put a dollar value on it. On it. That's the part where it pulls at my heartstrings too, because I know, I know what you, you know, you're like, oh my God, this is my kid's right. blanket. Right. But it's still a nasty blanket to me, the insurance <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I'm sorry. 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 I
if something happens at this house, I'm not calling the insurance company before it's $5,000. I quote you with a $5,000 deductible. Because what you are saying is, I have prepared myself that in the event of a loss in my home, in right. my apartment, in right. my condo, right. I'm prepared to lose $5,000. So if you have a claim and it's $2,500 worth of contents missing, right. you don't file a claim. Mm -hmm. You you said, that's on me this that's time. Me. Yeah. But at the same time, if you've lost your $100,000 home and $75,000 in contents, you said, no, yeah, I'm good on that $500,000. <laughs> right. and, and that makes sense because that's what the insurance company is, is saying that we're going to do. I gave you a premium based on the deductible that you selected. Right. Mm, love that. Yes, thank you. No more questions so far. Okay. Y'all, we're going to finish our home inventory, our All right. approval session with Carol Jones. Mm -hmm, Ooh, mm -hmm. Carol, as much time as I spent with you, I'm still learning. <laughs> Always something new. And it's the kitchen. Okay, the kitchen, y'all. So, yes, people need to come in and appliances. Right make model year, you know, talking the whole time. But I think it's also important that people understand that they literally need to come and open the cupboards. Absolutely. Right. So you want to take note of what you have, because again, if you had a hurricane or a tornado, right. who you was going to remember how many Absolutely. plates you had? Absolutely. And this is probably one of the most overlooked rooms. People remember the big things. They remember the stove, they remember the refrigerator, right. the microwave. Right. They forget about the knife block that was on the counter. Yeah. They forget about the uh, little utensils on the counter. Right. They forget to open the cabinets and, and open up all the 900 Tupperware bowls they had up under the cabinet. Right. So the pots, the pans, and so they start to realize that they have not accounted for most of the things. I always tell people, if you stood in your kitchen right now today, and if you had a fire, you had to replace everything, how much is it gonna cost you? They just stand there and look. Right. They remember that the cost they paid for was the refrigerator, the microwave, the curate. Right. Everything else is just, I can't remember. Mm. I'm thinking about the small utensils. I have an Instapot, a crock pot, mm -hmm. a blender. Right. Uh, Nutribullet. <laughs> Your Keurig machine. You're right. I got a Keurig yes. machine. And see, that's why I always tell people, like, well, my girlfriend, she said that, you know, she's only got X, Y, and Z. So if I'm your girlfriend, let me tell you what I've got. Some red Solo cups <laughs> and some paper plates because I don't cook. Right. I'm not a cook. Right. So, I, yeah, I got a few glasses and that sort of thing, but for the person that entertains, right. for the person that has Ch kids, yeah, dishes. Right, and all that, mm. I don't have that. Right. But when something happens and now you're back in your home that's been rebuilt, you realize, oh, my God. What happened to my corningware? Where's my mm -hmm. corn? Where is my blender? Right. Where's my KitchenAid mixer? Right. So you got to remember all of those little things. Uh, they matter. Okay. And again, once you really start to do this, you're thinking to yourself, I don't have enough coverage. Right. For the small you claim you may. Uh -uh. But worst case scenario, always think at what's the worst thing that can happen yeah. Yeah. that will upset my world. And I know I was when I talked to you, I was kind of worried about no coverage. But my agent told me the max was a percentage of my home value. And so, will I ever be able to get full coverage? Say, you know, you have high taste and you just have all of these things, but it ends up exceeding the value of your home. Okay. What, what do you do in those cases? So, in most cases, most policies, so just we'll just use an easy number. Most policies will say, if I insure the house for $100,000, the personal property is going to be covered at $75,000. That's just cookie cutter. Okay. I've, I've just etched that out. I can say that my house is insured for $100,000, but when I went through and did my inventory, that $75,000 number now needs to be $92,788. That should be your personal property number. You need to ask your agent, what under the policy will allow me to increase my yes. personal property amount? Right. He's giving you what the, cookie cutter. the cookie cutter. Yeah. It's up to you to go in and put your Finger print on it and make it your own. Right. That's what makes the difference. And, and Ani, you're bringing up a good point because, and Tiana did too, you think, because a lot of us have nice things. You Like, yeah. um, you can have high-end appliances. You can have high-end small appliances. You want to be made whole for that stuff versus someone just saying, this is what your number needs to be. Absolutely. You know, you know, Carol told me the first time that I did it, stand in each room and what would it cost to replace each room? 
That's how much coverage you need to have. That's a completely different perspective than just a number that's a formula. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know you can go back though. Cause they take they say it like it's fine. Right. That's that's the max coverage you can get for this. Right. Move on. Right. Think of you think of your insurance agent or your insurance company as an employee that you're getting ready to hire. Right. If they're not the right fit, if that's all they offer is cookie cutter, then you need to move. You need yeah. to get a new employee. Yeah. You've got to because you got to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if something happens, you're the one lost. Right. You they haven't lost anything. Right. They yeah. gave you that cookie cutter policy and you right. accepted it. Right. One of the things that I tell clients when they're first buying a home, they're so eager to get to the closing table that they never go back to revisit it. They just want to close. Yeah. And then five years later, they realize they never went back yeah. to see yeah. exactly what they so have or that. even what they've accumulated in those five years of being yeah. in that new home. Yeah. So yeah, I don't care who the company is. Mm -hmm. It's got to fit you. Mm -hmm. It's got to be what you need, what works for you and your family. When you got your policy, maybe it was just you. Right. Now it's you and two kids. So it makes a difference. Because now you're adding in kids uh, clothing and kids toys. Mm -hmm. So it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No questions right okay. now. You guys feel free to drop questions in the comments. Okay. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So Carol, I guess for a sitting room like this, we're just doing the same thing. We're just yes. taking video of any artwork, furniture, window treatments. We're again, we're just talking in Absolutely. our Absolutely, we're just going around again. We're saying this is my little sitting area, okay. two chairs, right. uh, coffee table, right. a vase, and right. then some kind of wall art. So right. we're gonna do that in every single room. Okay. But you literally wanna walk through right. each and every room. The same thing about our little desk area. We wanna make sure we've got two, two chairs, our desk table, a lamp, we've got some artwork, we've got uh, a planter, and then some decorative, uh, uh, item on the table. So we, again, we want to make sure that we are literally calling out each thing that we have in the room, taking right. pictures, taking video. Mm -hmm. um, so when people have like a lot of books, you know, um, is that something that you just, again, take video of and keep going? Yeah, or I just take video and I kind of highlight everything that's on that particular bookshelf. Okay. And I'm not calling out the name of every single book on there, but just taking a general inventory of that uh, okay. particular section. Okay. So now we're coming into a bedroom. Uh, closet, Lord, most of us women, <laughs> this does not reflect what y'all's closets look like for real. But when we, a lot of us have so many clothes, absolutely. So then, what you're gonna do is generally, literally, pan in on your closet. So right. you're just gonna come in and imagine this is a completely full closet. You're looking at all the clothing that you have in there, your right. row of handbags. Um, maybe some jackets and shoes, but again, you want to kind of show what it is. And it, and this may be, um, I'm in bedroom number two. I'm in uh, my daughter's bedroom. This is her closet. These are her clothes. Uh, she's got some handbags sort of there. And say, for instance, she had a couple of uh, games or toys or whatever is in that closet. So you just want to kind of pan through on those kinds of things. Now, something else that you want to do. If again, you're that great lady that likes to spend all that money on those red bottom shoes mm -hmm. you might want to pick up a couple of pairs show that red bottom mm -hmm. <laughs> so that we'll know mm -hmm. she's got red bottom shoes it wasn't a pair of nine west shoes whatever it is to make sure that you've okay. given some sort of um, indication of, of what you actually own mm -hmm. so you could be made whole again and you can be made whole again all absolutely right. okay okay so we have another bathroom so, um, again, same point in yeah. this room, right, Carol? Yeah, same thing. You just kind of want to take a picture or take video of your linen closet. You want to make sure that you kind of take uh, the items that you have on your counter, uh, your ironing board, all those things. Because, again, that's all your personal property. So, you just want to, again, make sure that you include everything in every room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We may be jumping ahead, but you did mention about the upgrades when you are doing your policy. Mm -hmm. So if we did have a home that was at a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and now we've made the updates and it's appraised at a higher level, will the policy be adjusted based on the appraisal or still on the mortgage? No, it's going to be based on the appraisal. The mortgage company only cares that you insure for what you owe them. 
You want to make sure that you get replacement value for your home. Again, you want to make sure it's replacement value because now you've done all kinds of upgrades. You want to make sure that if that house burns down tomorrow, that you are fully covered for what it would cost to rebuild that home. Mm -hmm. So we, we have another bedroom. And this one, I'm glad that we came in here. I know the lighting isn't quite as good. Laptops. Yeah. So for gaming systems, laptops, I guess we treat them like the TV. Treat it like the television. Okay. I've got a Dell computer with a 14 inch screen. Okay. Uh, I don't know, 10 gigabytes of memory, all what? of that. Okay. I purchased it from the Microsoft store. Mm -hmm. uh, the price was $699. Okay. I've got additional hard drive storage that's on the other side of it that I purchased at Best Buy. It was $99. Okay. So again, you're giving all the information okay. about each particular item. Record that serial number right. and um, any other additional information you may have about uh, the actual computer, like the software you may have purchased for it. Okay. Like the software on it? So if you have like Microsoft Word or like Photoshop. So do anything, they... yeah. So any software that you purchase and you've now added on there, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you make that notation because otherwise, what am I going to give you? Right. Just your Dell computer. Mm -hmm. I, I did not know. think about the software. Yeah, I didn't think I about that either. That but that software yeah. is expensive. So exactly. <laughs> it's like, exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So you want to talk about your bedding. So that's important too. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't just have the bed. I've got a comforter set that mm -hmm. I purchased from William Sonoma. Or I've got right. a comforter set that I purchased from Target. Right. Wherever you, you got, got it from. Yeah. And give a description of the bed too. Yeah. King size, California yeah. Is it a California, California king? Yeah. California yeah. king or twin bed, you know, right. whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, which reminds me, a twin bed. Most of our kids, when they go off to school, have them to do an inventory too. So while they're moving in to North Carolina a and mm. now they've moved away for the first time, you've purchased all that stuff for that dorm, but because that kid is still under you, yeah. Make sure you've got their things covered as well. Make them do their own inventory. Right. Mm. So while we're talking about that, what about stuff that we have in storage? Okay. So most of your policies will read that your personal property is covered anywhere in the world. It's covered while you go on vacation. Did you know that? It's somewhere? covered. It's yeah. covered in that U-Haul uh, storage uh, bin while you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with that extra couch. Right. It's covered in the hotel. It's covered in your home. And right. it's covered in your so mm. then it's not necessary to take out additional policies when you have it in storage. No. A lot of uh, storage companies will say, well, if you have your own policy, have them to add, your insurance company to yeah. add us as an, an additional insured, meaning that they recognize that you've got some personal contents in there. But what they're saying to you is if your personal contents damages their facility, they want to make sure that you um, have coverage to take care of them. Yeah. So that's for those of us who have our renter's insurance policy or our homeowner's policy. If you're just putting stuff in storage and you don't have a homeowner's or renter's, then you probably need to get the storage company's insurance. Absolutely, you do. Because okay. then you don't difference. have any buffer you don't to have protect any coverage. Yeah. And so I think, Carol, please explain that. So Stephanie goes on vacation. You know, so she's in Hawaii, living her best life. Mm -hmm. She's got that Gucci purse with her and some amazing jewelry, <laughs> right? Right. Goes goes out the hotel, comes back. Somebody's mm -hmm. broken into her room, mm -hmm. and her stuff is gone. Absolutely. So, will her homeowner's policy cover her purse and jewelry while she's in Hawaii? Absolutely, because we're thinking. It's just like you've been at home. It's just like the same incident yeah. happened to you in your home. Right. So your personal uh, policy, your declarations page that explains all of your coverages will say, your personal property is covered wherever you are yeah. or wherever it is. Mm -hmm. So it, like you said, you could be on vacation. You could have been at LA Fitness. You left your work clothes and your computer and a couple of pairs of shoes in the car. You come back, your trunk is popped open. It's gone. It's covered under your homeowner's insurance policy. Again, it's subject to your deductible, but you don't have to feel like, oh my God, I've just totally lost out. Okay, you made a good point. So if something happens in your car, mm -hmm. which policy do you go through? Should you go through the home or do you file a claim with your car? The car didn't do anything. The car didn't take your things. So your There's personal property is covered up under your homeowner's or renter's insurance policy. Right. So the coverage follows that policy. Right. Now, the damage to the car itself, I, they popped open your mm -hmm. trunk and pried that open. 
that's a car policy if you have that particular coverage. But the contents inside of the car, those things that are not a part of the car are covered under the homeowner's policy. Good to know. So it's filing two claims. You're going to file two claims. Yeah, you're going to have one where they damaged Super your helpful. trunk and your stereo system, and then one where they took your clothing, your work bag, and uh, mm -hmm. your laptop, and those types of things. A lot of people don't realize that because you're like, oh, I had my laptop, I had my purse and my trunk. Yeah. I'm going to file that under my auto policy. Right. It's completely separate. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally mm -hmm. different animal. Yeah. We have a question that you kind of just alluded to okay. the answer, but just to get um, it answered. Nay, Virgo lady asks, if your laptop is stolen outside of the home, could it still be covered as a claim under the policy? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just like Stephanie said, say for instance, she was at Starbucks. She left her laptop to go grab her latte. Comes back, somebody's taking her computer. That can be covered under her renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, condo insurance policy, whichever applies. Again, these things are subject to your deductible, but it is good to know that you have coverage there. Yes. Okay. Awesome. No more questions right now. Okay. Thank so you, we're guys. Go back out. Okay. So, Lord, we have attics, we have basements, we have yes. garages. Y'all know y'all got a whole bunch of stuff. Christmas yes. stuff, Absolutely. your kids' stuff, your mama's stuff, your grandmother's stuff. Absolutely. So, I'm assuming people should do an inventory of the garage, attic, basement, Absolutely. all of that, too. The attic, the basement, and the garage are three of the most overlooked spaces. Mm -hmm. People always forget about that. You forgot that you've got that Christmas tree up there with all your ornaments up there. Right. You forgot that you have your uh, cheerleading uniform from high school that you swear <laughs> that you're going to wear to your next reunion. <laughs> Yeah, in your basement, you've got all those exercise bikes and, and Suzanne Summers, uh, yeah. Thigh Master. So you, you forget about those things. So your attic and your basement are two important parts that you want to make sure that you do an inventory on those as, as well. Right. And again, it's, it may be one of those things where you want to get rid of a lot of the stuff, but if you have it up there, you know, radio, um, uh, what do you call those, album collection yeah. that you may have just stuffed up there, yeah. the old record player that you really don't use anymore, but you yeah. don't want to get rid of it, yeah. it's probably in your attic or somewhere stuffed over to the side of your garage. Right. And then what people forget about in the garage is that a lot of people keep their lawn equipment and all that. Right. So now I've forgotten about my weed eater and my blower and yeah. the lawnmower. Thanks so, yeah. So right. then when it's stolen, I don't have any idea, uh, was it a... Uh, I don't know. Was it two lawnmowers? Was it a riding lawnmower? Right. What model was it? What was the horsepower? So those are the things you too want to include with your And inventory. it's funny. We're going to keep walking this way. To hear um, Carol, you and Stephanie talk about this, you know, as many times I've done a home inventory, I have never done my garage. <laughs> and we have a, in the back of our um, house, we have a, um, it's like a, a small little storage unit with mm -hmm. all the lawn equipment. I have never done that before. Yeah, I've never done that. I'm just like, never, it just never even occurred to me um, mm -hmm. till right now, like, uh, and we got a lot of valuable stuff in that too. We have a riding lawnmower. And you have to think too, when people want to break in your home or take something, right. they go for the easy things. Right. The tool shed is easy to get to. Right. So I've just taken everything out of there. Right. I've taken the Christmas tree, I've taken the, the lawnmower, right. I've taken the, the kids, the little riding jeep, right. all of that stuff. Right. Because it's easy to get in and out. Yeah. But you don't have a record of it. Mm. See, now, and then you try to even remember what was actually in there. You don't even remember. Yeah. So mm -hmm. again, now, when you think about worst case scenario of everything, you want to think about those things. People that have swimming pools and have that pool equipment stored away, right. you don't think about that. Right. Um, so you want to make sure that you are always thinking. When you walk in your house to it, or any part of your property, right. is it documented? Is it, mm -hmm. document? is it recorded? Right. Do I have it? Uh, did I did I list it? So you want to do all of those things. Mm -hmm. And after you do the first inventory, which is probably going to take you the longest mm -hmm. amount of time, right. the following year when you're doing it, you're saying, oh, take off the TCL television because I replaced it with a 65-inch Sony television, right. new serial number, and you're done. You're like, I only purchased one major thing this year. Or I got rid of the tool shed in the back. Now the lawn equipment is stored in the basement, so I'm just 
updating it that way. Right. So all in all, it's just your diary. Right. Mm-hmm. It's your diary over right. and over again. It's that first entry, right. that mm-hmm. first inventory that's going to take you the longest amount of time. In question, would you, like, if you had to file a claim, would you provide them with the first one and the updated one as well? It depends on what, what kind of claim you got. So if it's a mm-hmm. huge claim and they really need to know everything that's in your house. So, yeah, they can start looking at the whole thing. But then when they get to 2022, they say, oh, Tiana said that she replaced that television. So I'm scratching this one off. And then, because you're writing the inventory out for them, mm-hmm. they're scratching that off. But then they still got proof. Now she said she purchased a 65-inch television. Right. Not only do I see where it is, this time she has the receipt because she just purchased it last mm-hmm. year. She's got a picture of the television, she's got the serial number, and she's got that receipt from Target. Mm-hmm. So it just mm-hmm. makes it easier. Yes, mm-hmm. that's good to know. Any more questions, Tiana? Um, we kind of already covered this. Nay Virgo lady, she might have asked this a little earlier, yeah. are sheds covered and items within it too? So yeah, the answer is yes, the shed is covered. There's something on your homeowner's policy that's called dwelling extension. Mm-hmm. That's anything that's a part of your property but not directly attached to the house. It could be an in-ground pool, it could be a barn, it could be a gazebo, it could be that shed. And then the contents, yes, the contents are covered under personal property. Good to know. Now, but there's a caveat. Unless you are running a business from your home, then you need to make sure your policy is endorsed for that. Mm. Same thing if you run a daycare in your home and you've got all those little kids' desks. That's no longer personal property. That's your business. So that's a separate policy. Or it can be an endorsement under certain policies okay. if you've got less than six kids. Tiana's like, come on. <laughs> not another Same. policy, y'all. Not <laughs> another policy. <laughs> yeah. So that is why, Wait a again, minute. you right. need to have yeah. an agent yeah. that you can really talk to. Talk because to. Yeah. all that I've just said, may apply to Janelle, but it does not apply to you. you. Right. Mm-hmm. So you can't start comparing, girl, you need to get your policy here. No, you need to get your policy wherever it belongs mm-hmm. to cover whatever you have right. mm-hmm. and then and take it from there. Right. And mm-hmm. again, like I said, honey, if that policy or that company does not fit you, start right. shopping. Right. And, and what I hear you saying, Carol, really is your insurance is not just a bill. Because I think most of us treat it just like a bill. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it sounds like we have to have a whole different relationship with our insurance agent. Mm-hmm. And that we have to be more diligent and vigilant yes. about knowing what we have and making sure we have the proper coverage for everything. Absolutely. Right. You know, it's just like um, the teacher can give you the assignment, right. but she can't do the work right, for you. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, that's one of our things. And, and like you said, we all, all of us think about think of it like that. Like, oh my God, I pay all this money for insurance, but what do I get for it? But when something happens, yeah. you will be so happy you that you did. Insurance. Because when you think about paying a premium for $1,000, it's insuring you for $100,000, I'll take that $1,000 and pay it all day long. Right. Because mm-hmm. in the event that something happens, there's no way in the world I could imagine right. putting my life back together again. Right. You know, it's just like the police officer. You pay taxes for him. Now, that doesn't mean that you've been robbed every day, but the day that you are, you want to come running. Mm-hmm. So, call them up. Right, absolutely. Any other questions? We don't have, um, should you take pictures of the receipt? But yes. Yes, absolutely. Because receipts fade. So mm. if you want to snap a picture of it, you've got it. Mm-hmm. Don't be stressed. Ani, Ani is stressed over here. Ani is stressed. So um, everybody who's watching, thank you all for tuning in. Now, Carol's going to be back with us, um, Tiana, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's October 19th. Yes, Tuesday, October 19th at 7 p.m. Yeah, so we're doing a full policy review with Carol on Tuesday, October 19th. So please print, download your policies. Now, this is car insurance. This is homeowners. This is renters. She talked about their personal articles. So we're going to be doing a policy review. So please, please, please join us on the 19th. Um, the other homework that you have, you have got to schedule the day and time that you're going to do your own personal home inventory. Mm-hmm. You have got to get it done. Go ahead and decide who you're going to send it to, where you're uploading it to, but you've got to go ahead and get that done. And then last, you have to set a reminder in your calendar every October from now on that you're going to update it. Because we got to do this every single year. This is not a one and done. All right? Carol, you are amazing. Thank, Thank you, Carol. We all have some work to do. Woo! We all have some work. we got homework. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tiana has homework. Absolutely. Annie has homework. Lauren, Stephanie, everybody has homework. Absolutely. We all have homework. Let's get it done. Thank y'all for tuning in. And Carol, we're going to see you on the 19th. I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
Thank you.